Just one or two words on things like um, material equipment and the, the way we'll be running this uh, before we get going, talking about the subject and then moving into the painting as quickly as possible. The uh, paper, um, I, I do say this every time, but I know we have lots of uh, people, new people coming e each session, but the paper I'm using is a cotton rag paper. It's made by Saunders, Saunders Waterford. And it's um, uh, 300 grams per square meter or uh, 140 pounds. And the size of the paper is about 15 inches by 11 or 400 by 300, very, very roughly. Uh, and uh, uh, this, in fact, is from a large sheet. Uh, I buy them in large sheets and tear them up into four, and so this is a quarter of the large sheet. So the paper is ragged. This is uh, the, the thing that made it that content, and uh, that allows it greater <laughs> absorbency than, um, than many other types of paper. The paints I'm using, which are shown here, uh, are all artist quality. I, I think they're pretty much all uh, Winsor Newton, uh, but there are many other great makes that you, you could have. And I, uh, Lois did send you out a list of all the colors that these are. I will talk about them each time I use a color. The, the only addition I've just put in is um, Windsor Orange. Uh, it's a, I've been trying to get hold of that color and uh, I may not even use it today, but I'll, I'll explain at some point why I have got an, an orange uh, as well as a green and a purple. Uh, I'll come back to later on. These are the paints, they're all artist quality and uh, I, 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 I'll talk about them as we go along and talk about what I'm using to mix. But if you, if you don't hear me or you've got any questions, please do come back on the chat or whatever. And then lastly, uh, brushes. These are, um, I, I don't know whether I'll be using all of them today. Could well be using them. The, the, the biggest brush is this mop brush, which is about an inch. It's squirreled here. And uh, the point is it will pick up a lot of water. It'll bend into all sorts of interesting shapes and it will come to a point pretty much every time. Uh, I've got a smaller version of that here, also squirrel here and does the same sort of things, but it's just a, a little smaller. And, and then uh, these three brushes. This one uh, is another one that picks up a lot of uh, water, but it's known, known as a sword. Um, I'm, I may, I'll probably be using that and I'll explain about that brush when I'm using it. And, la uh, not, and penultimately is this little brush here, a rigger, it's a very fine little brush. Um, I, I may or may not be using this brush here, which is um, uh, uh, two or three paint sessions ago, I suggested people get hold of a, a very cheap children's uh, soft brush and give it a really bad haircut. <laughs> That's what this has had. And, uh, if, if I use that, uh, I'll explain what, what, why I'm using it, what, what it might be doing for me. So those are the brushes. Um, there is one other paint just coming back, which I, um, I think I'll be using in this painting, uh, which is this white gouache, um, very opaque paint. And I'll probably not use that until the very last bit of painting I do all together. So uh, we'll begin. The subject is uh, an autumnal uh, walk, or, or uh, for uh, our American friends, a walk in the fall. Actually, I have to say, I, I do like that word the Americans use for autumn, fall, because it, it, it so precisely describes exactly what happens. You know, everything's falling off the trees. Um, so this is a picture taken, I took some years ago in Devon um, uh, on, on a walk sometime in November, maybe later in November. Um, and uh, it seemed to me quite a good starting point for the, the painting that, that we're going to embark on today. Now, Lois did send you a copy of this out and she also sent you a, a practice painting that I had done when I was planning this particular session, which is here. And you, you can see there's really quite a big difference. So what, one of the things that I'd like to talk about as we go through this is how you might use a photograph 
to produce your own personal and more intimate painting from that photograph and, and how you, you can use a photograph and how there are some aspects of photographs that you, you should maybe try not to use. And we'll hopefully that that will come out as we progress uh, through this painting. Um, right, so what um, I am going to do with this painting, and it's pretty much the same as most other paintings I've done, is break it into four uh, distinct steps. Uh, I'll demonstrate each step and then I'll pause uh, to allow people to paint or probably to, to catch up if you're working alongside me. Um, and, and then try and work it out so that uh, we move on to the next step when everyone is more or less ready. And as, as Lois said, that if you do get caught a little bit short because we're moving a bit too fast, then these uh, sessions are all being videoed by her and uh, you're available to look at, available to be looked at later on as well. Now, <clears throat> the, the first step that we'll deal with is the drawing. Uh, and, and in that, I include the composition. So just as if one was sitting outside looking at a scene like this and trying to work out whether this might be a subject for a painting, I'd just like to talk about this particular scene and how, I, I might compose it or change it slightly um, it, uh, from the photograph, of course, but 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 also the, the, the feel of it uh, for the painting. So, uh, of course, it's got uh, the light that's coming here from the, the top right and shining down. It's casting all these long shadows here and it's picking up bits of light on the leaves as it catches the bits of light. And you've got this wonderful play of light and dark here. So there's great opportunity for different values here, values of light against dark and vice versa and so forth. Um, that, that, that's an appealing uh, aspect of this uh, that I found. The, the, the other thing that I really like about this is the play between uh, warm colors, these sorts of, oranges and warm yellows and so forth that, that you can see here. The play uh, with the warm colors and the cooler colors uh, in, in the photograph I've got here. Uh, there is, in fact, it's a sort of frost, I think, which is possibly over this part, but it's, it's making that area quite cool. And similarly, on the other side, this area here is cool. There's sort of blue in here which um, I'll, I'll try and make use of in the painting. And, and in fact, there's bits of green and bits of green here as well. So you, 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 you then come forward a bit and you've got some more warm colors um, here. So I like that play between the values, the lights and the darks, and the play between the temperatures, the cool and the warms, the cool and the warms. Uh, that, that seems uh, re really interesting. There is um, one other thing that uh, I'll talk about before I go ahead and do it is that when, when I was thinking about using this image as a source image for this painting, I, I, I felt that it would um, benefit, it would be possibly become a little more intimate if it had some figures uh, in it. And you can see that I have put those figures into the finished painting there. But there's one other thing uh, before I begin drawing that I want to explain that I've done. And, and, and this is also thinking about making the painting a little more intimate than the photograph. Um, and that is to do with um, my eye level and the horizon, which th this track runs down here bends left and then bends right and it disappears around here and we the, the track becomes almost negligible about here so that sort of level there is kind of the horizon it's kind of my eye level standing here taking the photograph and I have changed that as you will see in uh, the painting and I have brought that down here 
and made sure that the figures that I paint into it, these figures, I don't know if you can see that, these figures that I've added to the composition are actually above the eye level. I, I just felt that brought my, my brought me into and down towards the people a little bit more. If, if I were to use this exactly as it is in the photograph and put the figures in here somewhere, it, uh, it, they, would, they would not break that line of the horizon. They would look very much more as if I was looking down on them. Whereas I'm trying to get this more intimate feel as, as I'm looking as if I'm walking behind them a lot more. So, so that's just a point. And having said that, um, and ha having talked about the composition and so forth, I, I'll just go into the drawing. Now the drawing really wants to be as minimal as possible, but the single most important line to me, I'm not sure whether I need to change it or not, is this line that I first described to you here. Where the, where the track seems to disappear away. We can't see over the top of the track anymore. And um, so uh, I think um, I, I'm, I'm also going to make sure that the figures are off center. I'm gonna bring them over to the right a little bit so that maybe I've got more available to paint here than I have here. I'm, I'm maybe just going to take everything over to the right just a little bit more. All right, let's have a look. So um, I'm putting in a few lines here which might suggest a whole lot of wood and forest there and and the, I'm going to have trees, these trees, which are, I, I might not make quite as heavy as they are here, somewhere coming down to about there. And this forest. Now, I'm going to try and put my, my figures in here and see if I can relate that. So I've got the left-hand side, the right-hand side. Um, let's... Uh, have the figures, they, they've got a dog as well somewhere. So I'm gonna try and get the figures in about, about that sort of height. Let's see how it goes. They're walking away from me, these figures. They've probably got coats on. And you're drawing this, keep, keep the, the head as small as you can. I probably made it too big there. And um, something like that, so one of them is going to be, and then uh, it looks like his lady friend is here, a little bit shorter. They're quite up close to each other. Got a big coat on as well. Put in as little information about the legs. Not make that the worst. It's going to be something like that, and there's going to be a dog. Just just put a little dog in here. I have no idea what type of dog this is. It's um, a back view of one, so a dog of some kind. And the lead. So, so they're my figures. So let's have a look how that's going to pan out with um, that horizon. So I, I, if I bring horizon to about there, yeah, okay. And uh, so we've got I don't need to put much more in. The, the trees are going to be coming down to here. Um, there's track going off like that. There's a, I'll bring this out a bit now, I'll just sort of do that here. There's a, I, I quite liked in this photograph these, these two saplings or whatever. I thought that they 
quite good. So I'm going to have one at an angle there and another one there, say, and now there is the, 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 the track sort of leads away Something like that. All right, so we've got um, one other bit of drawing, which I think will be very useful, is that in the photograph, and I'd like to bring that in to the painting, is these uh, uh, little puddles here. You can see where the light's catching the puddles and so forth. And, and that might be quite useful to not paint over uh, and make use of some. So let's stick a, a, a sort of, something like that. If I do that, it's a little bit like the roses we did a couple of weeks ago, where we just sort of drew in and a couple of little um, shapes that I didn't want to paint over. Uh, I, other puddles may, may form themselves fine. So let's just, let's see how that goes uh, for the puddles. Right, um, I, I think I've managed to bring my eye level down here. Uh, this whole area here, I, I really like that area, this, this uh, distant greyness uh, here, and I've made much more of it than I have in the photograph, because I've given it much more space um, here. Uh, but that's also because um, in the painting, I, I, I think to try and get this feeling of uh, leaves falling and everything, I've, I've added that sort of information, something more in the foreground, uh, to what, what is not in the photograph. So we're just taking the photograph and we're, we're man manipulating it so we make it work as, as it is. Now a lot of this is very dark here and that's going to work well um, if I'm able to paint that over something that's light. So I've, I've left quite a bit of light area here for that to happen. I've not bothered drawing in the trees yet. I'll, I'll see what happens to where the paint goes. And I've only made, uh, um, let's just change that a bit. Bring, I've only made uh, a, a few marks here to suggest what's happening on the left. And that's as much drawing uh, as I want to do just at the moment. Okay, everybody. If anyone's got any questions on that, please ask, but good luck everyone. And let's, let's make some sort of a, a start at, uh, at the first step, which is the drawing. But thinking about the composition and the drawing. Um, you can add more people if you wish. Um, you can add what, just one person, no people if you wish, or you can add more dogs. Maybe they're walking uh, many more dogs than we've got here. But um, hopefully that's explained my thinking behind the composition and shown you what I've put in by way of uh, drawing before we begin. Right, so um, again, the photograph was the starting point uh, and there's some wonderful detail of little leaves glowing like gold yeah, uh, in, in the light set against the, the dark and everything like that. But, but any photograph is going to be as good as the camera can make it or the lens and, and indeed the time when you actually take the picture. So I, I'm, I'm very much using artistic license here and I'm thinking wonderful for colors uh, and um, that, uh, just the feel of, of heading off into uh, a forest here. And, and that, that's part of the composition really is these people, uh, there's a story here, they're clearly walking through the forest and heading off into the unknown around the corner. So the, the colors that I'm going to use are going to be much uh, stronger and brighter um, than in the photograph, but I'm still playing with the idea of the values, the lights and the darks and the warms and the cool uh, tones and, and colors. Um, the, this area here, just, um, I, I, there must be many ways of doing this, but when I was 
doing my practice painting. Uh, I wasn't quite sure which would be the best way of doing it. So I, I'll, I'll do it the way I did it, but you may want to do it a different way. I'm going to leave that area um, for, uh, for the, the step after this one. So I'm going to put in light wash colours, um, but leave this. And the first thing I'll do is when I come back on the third step is I will paint this in. I'll explain why, because the main reason why is that I wanted to try and um, I, I get some sort of good contrast between the, uh, the color that we've got there, the, the harder edges as well, in some cases, and the, the, the softness down here. I just wanted to send that back as possible. I'm sure there are lots of other different ways of doing it. And maybe the next time I did a painting like this, I would do it differently, but uh, that's what I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to start off using this brush, this um, big um, mop brush, which holds a lot of water uh, like that. Uh, and um, as you can see all my colors that I've got here, I'll talk about them. Um, I'm, I'm going to put in uh, the light colors, the wash colors. Uh, I'm going to be happy for the colors to merge in wet on wet to each other. I want to try and leave some of these spaces here for the puddles that I, and maybe even create the odd extra puddle as well. Um, uh, and put in enough of the light colors to get the uh, temperature as well, right? The warmth up here and the coolness down here. So, lemon yellow is the color I'm using here. And put that in. Yeah. I'm tempted to use this um, orange, but uh, that I've just bought, but I, I won't. I'll, I'll mix the colour. So I'm going to mix um, beryllium or cadmium yellow or something like that with, and and I'm doing this quite strongly um, with some. Elizrian crimson, some uh, the crimson, Elizrian crimson. Let's just see. And I'm going to put some of that in a little bit more red, maybe. I'll do, pop the other red in. Yeah, that's better. Just a little bit more red there. And I'm happy for that to. This area here, I said I wanted to keep quite light, so. Let's be happy to do just that. And I'll do the same over the other side, but um, I'm going to make this a little redder over here. So let's start off with that color that I mixed here. And now I've got light coming through here. So I, I the light is coming through this quite a bit. So I, I don't want to I want to leave quite a lot of space, which will be helpful to me later on. So let's not um, flood the whole thing with color as much as I have done here. Um, that was crimson I just put on there, just a little bit, let it all blend in. Um, across. I've talked about this being cooler and bluer here. So um, let's, uh, let's go to um, cobalt, I think, which is slightly cooler than alizarin and, uh, and put some of that in here. sort of given that a, some sort of blue um, and do the same over here although I'll make this a little greener I'll just make that a little greener and see what happens that's quite bright green so that's ultramarine I'm just that's right I'll turn it down a little bit just uh, some 
something like that. And um, whilst that's all sort of painting itself there a little bit, go for some raw sienna, or this could be yellow ochre to use, and um, oh, it's quite dirty, that one. Let's clean it up a bit. Let's just keep an eye on these little puddles, which would be quite useful to maintain as much as possible. In the photograph, quite a lot of uh, dead leaves here, but I quite like the extra bit of uh, red and warmth that that gives. So let's just pop some of that in here and just go back and mix up a, an orange and pop it into some areas here. Happy to leave uh, little patches of paper, which um, blank paper, which may or may not prove useful a little later on. Now, this is where I am. Um, let's just pop in a bit of that. Okay. Uh, this is where I said I was going to leave that. Um, and uh, am I going to do it? Yeah, I will leave it because it it it's, um, will help me show you something about a particular kind of painting a little later on. So I've I've put in here um, uh, washes really. Just I've let them run into each other. Happy for that to happen. Uh, I painted over my figures because that's not a problem at the moment, over the dog. Um, uh, I, I think let's just pop in uh, a few colours just which might be useful later on. Just Can you revisit the colours altogether, please? Right, so uh, here I am... Um, I use lemon yellow, and then I mixed um, uh, a cadmium yellow or rillion with um, a, a bit of crimson. In fact, I added a little bit of red as well. And I brought that in here and allowed them to mix into to each other at, at this stage. Um, so we, we've sort of got that area there, I brought that down here and then brought in some of this blue using cobalt um, and maybe a little bit of yellow. Uh, give it a sort of cool it down a little bit and, and did that here and, and over here I, I I kind of went a little more red with this I kind of started off with this colour leaving gaps and, um, uh, and and then bringing in some other reds and coming on down leaving gaps here for the light that comes through I also put some lemon yellow there and uh, came on down to something a little greener there a little greener than that but it was just cobalt with a little more yellow in it and then came on down here and and then with raw sienna or yellow, yellow ochre I, I played around with a lot of this area here uh, which will be light and um, I, and then brought it down here and dropped in one or two little colors which uh, could be useful just to, for the autumn leaves and bringing in some red here as well it, it was that sort of thing just letting it all go uh, there are gaps here which um, may or may not prove useful later on, but I have left that gap um, specifically because when we come back to the next bit of painting, I just want to deal with that. Um, it, it, this isn't necessarily the way you, you, you should do it or 
you have to do it, but it's just the way that I'm planning on doing this painting. That's where we're going with that. Before we do start the next stage of this painting, then this needs to be bone dry. So um, if you've got a hair dryer, that's quite useful um, or some means of drying your painting. Okay. Okay, that's the second stage in, in this fourth stage of the watercolors that I'm doing. And here we put in the washes. Um, and uh, in, in most cases, um, th there are lots of soft edges. Actually, I think because I have left this bit out, um, I've got some hard edges here, which is um, unusual for that first stage, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we do. But I'm, I'm going to deal with this. So I'm just going to wet that area and, and, and um, someone asked about how, how you're holding your brush. Well, I normally work uh, standing up um, with, with my, my painting vertical. Uh, it's for these sessions that I, I paint flat on uh, the, the table so that you can see it better. Uh, and, but that affects how I hold my brush. I mean, I, I quite often hold my brush like that as I do my, pe my pencils. But um, in, in fact, what, what I'm tending to do now in these sessions, I'm, when I do this demonstration, I tend to stand up. So I'm holding it a little bit more like that. The critical thing is that you're aware of how much water is on your brush. You're aware of how much water is on your paper. And uh, that's, that's the watercolor bit of the word watercolor. And then you're aware of how strong your pigments are that you are putting onto your, your either picking up with your brush or especially putting onto the page here. So I'm gonna start off this area here by wetting it uh, and creating some of this softness uh, that you see back here. Um, so this is just uh, wetting it with my brush and it's really important. I could have sprayed, I could have sprayed it with this thing, um, but what's important is that you're conscious of how much water is on the paper. Now there's quite a lot of water on the paper here. so. What I need to be aware of is um, how strong the paint is that I put onto this paper now. If I put, uh, if I mix up a colour with lots of water and add it to this now, it, it will probably all just get lost in, in, in one big flat colour here. But if I pick up, uh, dry my brush and pick up a very strong colour, then put that on, then I'm using the water that is on the paper to, to, do, uh, to do its work. So for this, I, I think um, I'm going to use my rigger brush and um, mix up this French ultramarine paint. Let's just see, that's gone a bit green because there was green there. Let's just add a bit of red to that. So I put a little bit of burnt sienna with that bit more of this. Now this is very strong, um, very strong paint and it's going on to quite a wet surface here, uh, which, it, which is that. And as, as it's uh, uh, as it dries, it, 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 it's sort of painting itself a little bit here. It's going quite soft. So I'm going to bring, add a little bit more brown to that. I'm going to bring some of that down here. Someone said that I, I wanted to make my uh, horizon a little bit um, lower. So now's your chance. Um, and from that, and take some of these, these trees, these marks I've made here. So let's just see. Um, when I'm coming into the where the yellow is in the edge of that, um, I, I'm just going to use, uh, try and get some rough marks, the edge of my brush or something like that to break it up a little bit here. 
I'm going to do the same here, put a bit more blue into that. And, uh, and the reason for that is so that I was talking about these values earlier, that I'm, I'm getting darks and lights playing off each other here. Let's just uh, bring some, something a little browner, a little bit warmer into some of that, one or two marks here. Uh, and I'm going to take some of this dark around the, the heads of this, this chap here a little bit, because I know that I want, I want the light to be glinting off him a little later on. So I'm happy to do that at this stage. Maybe that's all I need to do here. Let's just see what happens with, with that uh, and where it goes. Okay, um, as much as I can, I'll try and work from left to right in, in that it just saves me smudging uh, over things. Um, adding some water here just to Soften that down a bit. Okay, um, as much as I can, I'll go from left to right just to help the smudging things. So I'm going to bring in some uh, more orange in here. Um, and um, to answer that question about the, the wet on wet soft edges, I'm going to, I want to get some hard edges here, as you can see. That I've got here but I also want to have some soft edges as as it comes towards the yellow and it's a, a variety of hard edges and soft edges and uh, uh, I think I'll change my brush I'm going to go for uh, this smaller uh, a mop brush here um, someone said you know how do you hold your brushes well really how whatever is, is, is comfortable um, and if, if I'm painting my studio on a bigger painting on a wall, I'll be holding the brush maybe much more like that away from it. But if I'm coming up and doing something a little more detailed, I might be holding it a little bit more as I might writing um, a letter or whatever. So maybe some combination of, of, of the two here. So um, I'm going to this... Um, lemon yellow and put some in here in a sense I suppose I'm creating if you like uh, a hard edge and pick up a darker orange than I have already used here and so I'll, I'll go to my aurelian which um, could be cadmium yellow and um, I'll try some crimson with that. Add a little bit more of the other red and and so I'm I'm using my brush now. So I'm I'm I can get in some places I can get the point uh, making use and giving me sort of arbitrary but uh, hard edges that I was talking about here or I can use my brush on the side a little bit here uh, and, and that's touching into where I I put some of that lemon yellow the combination of the two let's mix up some more paint almost inevitably I end up always having to remix some paints. That's the same thing, the lemon yellow, Elysian crimson, a little bit of Windsor red, uh, and just putting that in here. These two posts that I talked about later on earlier, I'm just uh, seeing if I can 
leave those a bit. And this works its way down to the cool blues. Uh, up here, I'm happy to have, I've just added some water to whatever I have in my brush. Remember, I wanted this area here to, uh, to be quite light because I'm gonna be bringing the dark leaves over it a little later on. Um, So I'm using different marks with my brush, whether it's with the point or the flat edge, whether I'm trying to paint, paint uh, an area, uh, make more of an area there uh, than otherwise. And if I wanted to at this stage, let's say if I wanted to just, I'm sure I do actually, but if I wanted to bring in a few little variations in, in color here, then I can do that, particularly when I'm painting on the areas that are wet, that's going to be painting itself anyway, as we go on. So uh, I'll move uh, from here uh, and paint this bit and mix up, I'll go to my cobalt blue, I think, because I want, I could use ultramarine blue, but it's, a, it's got too much red in it. So I want it a bit cooler, a bit greener. So I'll go to that and add a little bit of um, the burnt sienna to that. Yeah, so I've got something here and, and again, you can see I'm using the, the point of my brush to, to get some areas which are Uh, I'm, I'm almost dictating the sort of shapes they are, although they're being put in and they're quite arbitrary and I'm running those. I was asking if you dampen the trees on the left first. Like... Uh, well, I, I, I didn't really. I just, I, I, I put some yellow in there as a form of dampening. Um, I then mixed up an orange, put that in here and where, where it met the bit I'd already dampened, you can see it's sort of got some sort of soft edges here. Um, and I'm going to be coming in with shadow over this a little later on. So I, I'm just making some marks here, which show if you like, uh, the shadows underneath the bushes that come around here. Um, um, this is wet paint that I put on here and I want to make it a bit stronger in some places. So I've go back to my cobalt, go back to my burnt sienna and I've got, and, and try and make it as, as a stronger color. That is take the water out of it as much as possible. Um, in fact, I'll add some ultramarine blue to that and a little bit of burnt sienna. So I've, I've got something dark. So I'm going to, in one or two places, I'll just drop some Now I'm taking some of this up into this area, some of that sort of dark bluey area, that uh, bluey green I've got. I'm just bringing it in here. If you, if you see my finished painting, I've got lots of little marks and smudges and things like that, which are all going to give the feeling of the leaves falling and that time of the year. But I, I can just pop these in here at the moment. In some places they're going to be hard edged and in others they're going to be uh, softer. Um, I'm using my finger just to soften the edges there. Um, 
be coming in with darker stuff later on. So I don't need to overcook this at the moment. That, that will probably be enough of that at the moment. So I've, I've got this blue area here, which um, I, I'm going to come back to in, in a moment when, when I do the overall shadow. So let's have a look at what's happening on this side here. I said before that I wanted this to be a little redder if, um, uh, if necessary. And I've, I've, I want to try and keep the idea of the light coming through here. So um, what have I got in my um, repertoire here? What's, oh, that's gone a little bit sort of brown. So let's mix up an, an orange which will be, uh, I'll go for this yellow that I use, which is um, Aurelian or Cadmium yellow would be a good one. Um, and I'm going to add some Elysian crimson to that and uh, see if I can make marks here, which are going to eventually give the feeling that we've got some lots of fall colors here. So I've put some of that in here. I'm, I'm Someone asked about this brush, isn't it? I'm, I'm sort of moving from the points that you get here to the flatness, backwards and forwards, where, where, wherever I think I want to make the marks. Um, th these light areas, I'll try as much as possible to avoid those. I, I'm going to add a bit more. Um, yellow to my orange so that uh, I get a variety of type of and I'm, I'm using this brush completely on its side like that just just touching it over like so which will be something to do with the overhanging branches let's just put a bit more and mix another color up here go back to that yellow, red, let's put some more red in here. And we're coming on down to this area which is quite dark um, in, in the photograph, uh, but that, that's something we'll worry about a little later on. Excuse me, Michael, did you wet the right hand side that you're working on now before you started putting um, a... No, no, I didn't. No, I'm just using lots of water on my brush. Oh, um, OK. I, I could have wet it, but but that that would give me almost every time I, I put colours together, I'd get a soft edge and I don't necessarily want that all the time. OK. OK, I, I can create soft edges um, by painting into bits that are already but so I, I think maybe let's just move on down here. All right, I'm going to move into this area here and bring in uh, something of that green, but a bit darker. So go back to my cobalt, put it in with whatever I've got here. Let's have a look. And where I'm putting the dark over the light paint, I'm getting sort of rather like negative painting. I'm getting things happening with the light here. So that, that's just fine. Um, let's come back to that in a moment. Uh, I haven't put any shadows in really. These, these are kind of shadows, but um, I, I'm going to bring my shadows in in just a moment. Um, and this area here, which I, I wanted to, uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just break this up a little bit more. A combination of the point of the brush. I just want something green and something blue to come through there. Um, 
and I want something a little uh, uh, warmer here. So let's go to some burnt sienna and mix this in with whatever I've got here. That's looking quite good. It gives me some sort of very warm brown. Uh, and again, as I've said before, I'm playing points. Of the, th these are, I suppose, there are lots of little leaves lying on the ground. Um, at the moment, I'm popping down the same sort of color here, but I might just add a little bit of crimson to my brush and drop it in in one or two places. A lot of this is going to be over shadow anyway, yeah, in a moment. And let's just bring a few little autumnal colors in here, avoiding, if at all possible, uh, the flat areas of the uh, water that right um, I've deliberately left the, sh the, the shadows, the, 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 the cast shadows uh, primarily uh, that are coming here and, and what it's doing is it goes over the ground uh, and, until this stage. And um, I'm just gonna dry this foreground a bit. So um, <clears throat> I want these shadows to be uh, quite blue, um, but, but they're going to do all sorts of, the blue is going to do all sorts of things as it goes over other colors. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna uh, for this primarily. And although I'll mix up a, a, a certain quantity of it, I'm, I'm almost certainly going to have to keep coming back and mixing some more. So this ultramarine blue, you'll see that, yeah, great. Ultramarine blue. I mean, French ultramarine blue is very similar color. I, I think the French is, I can't remember whether the French got more red in it or less red in it. Uh, uh, and, um, burnt sienna a little bit of that so this is going to gray it down too much and it will just become too brown um that's probably good blue i think let's just see how that goes and um actually having mixed it with that brush i might go back to this brush Oh, there's a lot of water in that, so let's just make this a bit stronger. So one of the things you're going to have to play with is just how strong do you make uh, these, these shadows here, because uh, watercolour always dries lighter than, uh, than it does. We can always make it stronger by dropping in some other colours, so just as we can make it lighter by adding water. So I'm going to make that colour just a bit stronger. And a bit bluer. There we are. Let's see how that go. We go with that. So I've got the lights coming across here, and uh, um, again, as much as possible, I'm going to uh, go from left to right. So I'm going to do something here, paint this, and then come in here just and try and finish here, if at all possible, so that I don't end up uh, putting my hand over everything that I've done here. Now. Um, So it's quite quite different. It's quite a bit darker this. Um, 
and I just like to soften some of those edges so I've just got this brush and put a bit of water on it and water here just to soften it a bit all right let's see what happens if we just go back uh, these two branches that are upright uh, of the saplings or whatever um, now this is not necessarily the darkest color because I'm still on this stage of the painting where we're dealing with uh, darker colors uh, including shadows so let's I think what I'll do is I'll because the light's coming this way I'll, I'll sort of hold my brush in a sense which encourage me to think of the lights running down this way. Do you see what I mean? Just like that. Um, and if I leave little gaps, that might be quite useful as well. How far over do I want to take this? We'll see. I don't want to obliterate that dog, which is what I did on my practice painting. If you look at my practice painting, there is a dog, but I, I lost him. Um, I'll try and keep the keep the dog in. So uh, and this is a sort of pathway that leads like that, and it may well be that the odd bit of water is, is, is coming out through here. Now let's move having having made some sort of statement about that. Um, Then let's move on. I need more paint, more, more of my shadow color, ultramarine blue. And burnt sienna are the two colors that I'm using here. Okay, and let's do something with this area here. Uh, I'm quite keen to put something dark around, as I think I mentioned before dark around this this um these figures just to help them to stand out and i'm aware that we've got light coming through here um i'm not going to paint the figures yet but let's put some shadows the lights sort of coming this way we'll put I've just gone to sort of the bottom of the bottom and got some shadows going this way and and the person who asked about leaving bits out and everything like that it could well be that you know this little bit here well, hey why don't we make that a why don't we make that a uh, some water now the the shadow is not going to necessarily go over where the water is and that that could be really useful to help us so we've got uh shadows now th that that's the people we've got these shadows coming from these trees here so let's put some of that in here uh, all these water i might end up losing some of these water um Uh, puddles that uh, are there, but uh, I'll, I'll probably get most of them in. So let's just let's play around with some of these shadows here. Uh, you can have hours of fun putting all these shadows in, but uh, it's got this light that's coming through here. I'll, I'll come. I'll do something with that a little later on. Let's just take that. Quite a lot of can you repeat the shadow uh color and the green color again? i'm using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna in in this and um and as i go along i'm popping in roughly what i think might 
the, the shadows, uh, which I will relate to the trees a little later on. Um, need to mix more. Here we are, a bit of water, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, not too much, otherwise it'll go too brown. That's a bit too much, so come back with some blue. And um, I'm, I'm now standing up over my painting and I'm painting a combination of, as I have done, of um, pointed brush, uh, and no, I'm not standing up because I just want to make sure I don't paint over all these water puddles. I'll see what they look like. If 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 it, if I've overcooked them, then I'll um and. I'm, I'm just putting a few little spots around here, which the last thing I want this to be is too tidy. Now we're look we're looking at quite a lot of shadow here, so I'm just using my brush in a different way. I've almost come to the end of this stage, so there's quite a lot. This is definitely the uh, the busiest of the, the stages of, of the four stages we've got here, and um, and I'll, I just want to do something up here. So I'll go back to my colour. It's getting very dark here, Lois. Can you still see that? All right. This yeah. Bit. Yeah, it's good. I, th I think the um, these uh, these lenses are amazing. Uh, yeah. Right, so let's have a look. What am I going to do here? Um, the, the actual darkness of the trees and that I put in here, I'll, the very dark bits I'll put in a little later on, but let's just... Um, get an idea of where these trees are, are going to go, roughly. Um, so I'm, I'm taking a lot of the water out of my brush and I'm just using the sides of it to make one or two. When this goes over all the reds, it, it's going to make them quite blue. Just, just, I don't want to overcook this. So just something like, right. Um, let's put some shadow here. It, it's quite good when you're putting figures into things to lock the figures a little bit into the shadow that, that, that so they're not, there's no temptation for them to float. I haven't painted the figures yet. Um, Right, that's, again, just using the edge of my brush. This is a dark, generally a, a darker area of the painting than that. Uh, the, uh, and the, the light should shine through some of these light bits. And I think um, that's as, as far as I want to go with, with that. So there was quite a lot there, everybody. Um, this, it's, uh, if you've been painting along, that's great. I'm trying to remember back to where I started, but we, we had the washes and um, it, it is a combination of soft areas and some hard areas. So quite a lot of soft areas here. I encourage the softness here, um, but there are some hard areas. This bit that we left uh, till, um, uh, we started this this session here has, um, has softened right down and it's going to have, have some harder leaves over it so it, it will further push it into the background and um, let's just see how that goes. Uh, 
I've worked over here. I moved around to this area. I spent quite a bit of time mixing up a lot of this shadow color, which I used ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, um, mixed several times. Um, and I brought that down here, often using my brush as if I'm painting this sort of trajectory of the, the shadows running this way. Um, uh, and trying to avoid using, uh, leaving some of these puddles here. In fact, I've ended up putting a few more in there, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I haven't painted the figures yet. I'll come to that in a moment. The figures and the darkness uh, and, and some of the intense darks that we're going to get in here will come in the next stage. Okay. How are we doing? Good luck, everyone. Right, th this is the, the, the last stage. And um, as I said before, quite a lot of this is going to be um, hard edged, I, I would say, and dark uh, as well. But we're, we're, we're trying to give it that sort of patina now of, um, of depth and, uh, and, and the, the falling leaves and all these marks. So we'll be using some uh, dark colors here. And again, I'll try and work from top left down down here as much as possible. I'm going to begin with all of these uh, these um, leaves and everything. I, I hope people find it useful that that I'm referring back to a practice painting because I, the, the idea of it is I did it well to find out whether I thought it was an appropriate subject but also I did it so that it, it might be of some help to, to give people an idea where they're going. So I'd, I'd be interested in any comments on that, but but uh, and often I, I try and do a practice painting that, that I can show. So I'm gonna start up here uh, and, and and then move down with, with dark colors. Um, I'm surprised you can see this. I can hardly see my painting here. Um, no, it's quite bright. Yeah, now <clears throat> a brush I'm probably gonna use a lot is this sword. Uh, sometimes called a dagger. If I wet it, you'll sort of get an idea of its shape a bit more. And it, it's, a, it's like uh, a rigger plus in, in that it's got that sort of point, which is really nice in a rigger, but it holds a lot more water. It's, it's, it's uh, even more difficult to control than a rigger. And in some ways, as I think you'll see what I'm, as I'm gonna do now, that makes it quite a useful brush to use. So I, I'm, I'm going to put down here uh, some dark colors, which are leaves and things coming from the tree somewhere uh, uh, um, in the um, foreground here ne near me. Um, but, but I'm gonna put down some light, slightly lighter and then go darker and then move on down. So I just dig up this area that I've been mixing this sort of blues in here, go to my uh, ultramarine blue again and uh, see what happens if I put some burnt sienna into that. Um, and I start making one or two marks. I don't mind I don't mind even if this isn't quite as at this stage isn't quite as um, uh, as dark as I um, I could go darker. So I'm just putting a few marks in here. Now th this brush, which I'm holding in this way, because I'm actually standing up over this. Um, I, I think I, um, no, I'm, I'm too close to hold it like that. So I tend to hold it like that. It, you can use these strokes in, in, in all uh, sorts of ways. The brush you can use and also on its side as a point, these little points as lines like that. Um, here, so right, I'm coming on down here. I'll, I'll I'll come back to this a little later with some dark, darker colours, and I'll bring that on down here. Remember, I put some little splotches of those shadows we use in the last stage here. I'm just working over uh, some of these here. Um, the light is coming from this side. 
So I think just to make something of this, uh, these two saplings or whatever they are, I'm going to put some dark uh, down the side of them. There's no need, uh, I, I suggest you don't need to sort of have it a, a solid line. It, it, we could sort of play around with this idea of having uh, sort of lost and found marks. Uh, there, and um, right. Moving on down to this area, I, I think I'll make the color even darker here and more ultramarine blue and more burnt sienna. But this time I'm also going to add in some neutral tint. Now this is a color which is, uh, Payne's gray would be a, a substitute color for it. Uh, it, it tends to be a little more transparent than Payne's Grey, but it's making that blue that I, um, I, I have used up here, it's making it even darker and darker still. So I want to make a few marks here. Which suggests the very darkest of the colors. Have you ever used uh, acrylic inks? Um, I I have, um, but I don't own any, and I, I think they'd be lovely. Um, yeah, I think they're great. I, I in fact I I like very much painting and and drawing with inks as well. Um, but but no, I haven't done a lot with them. I have to say. So uh, I'm bringing some of these marks here. Uh, if I if I want to. Um, make them a bit lighter. I can just add some water. I'll do that for a couple of them. A bit of water there and it's maybe too much water. Um, and so if you stand back when you're doing your, your, your painting and have a look and see uh, where the marks are. The, all, all these little marks that I'm making here are, are sort of a, a degree of chaos and uh, suggestion of this idea of the things falling. So again, I talked about the light coming this way. So uh, maybe I can put some marks which begin to suggest that sort of movement of light. These yellow trees are sort of overhanging this bit here a little bit. And just a few little dots, marks, dodges, which will help a little bit, I'm sure, just to take us to where we're going here. Now, um, I'll. Um, I'll leave that for a moment. I'll come back in case I, I, I'm certainly going to put something darker here. I'm just going to move up now to the trees and bring um, the, the um, details down and then bring them across here. So um, I want those trees to be really dark. So I'm going back to my neutral tint and my French ultramarine, really quite dark and, and the uh, the, the burnt sienna or the burnt umber, which I've got here, doesn't make a lot of difference, but burnt umber is a little bit darker. Uh, I'm going to, so I've got something that is really quite dark here, and I'll take as much water out of it as I can. So I'll start putting in some of the uh, trees, the bits of the trees. Now, th this, I'm using this brush, which is. Um, really quite awkward to control uh, and uh, um, bring it on down here. And 
because of its rigor like nature, you can get some very fine lines with this. Um, let's just bring in another bit of tree here. And bring the shadows down here. The very deepest shadows will be allowing the, what we put in before to show up as slightly lighter now. Small paint. Now we're coming up with the two hour mark, aren't we? So I'm putting browns in, the blues in the form of ultramarine blue, a bit more neutral tint. Um, let's put a tree in here, shall we? And of course, the, the trees are being um, blocked out by leaves as well. So we, we try and take that into account. Now we're moving speedily through this painting. Um, I haven't done the figures yet. Now this is quite a, a dark area. darker area so I'm going to bring that those these marks down to here now and they're, they're sort of broken marks in some places they're larger Branches, a few branches just showing. You can see the picture, all right? Can you, Lois? Yes, lovely. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring a head torch next time, I think. Um, Switching brushes, I think. Go to my rigger. I'm going back to these dark colours that I'd put in here. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna or burnt umber would be good. And a little bit of a neutral tint and uh, start making mark. Now where, where I want to emphasise the, the water, uh, the puddles, what, what I could do is just make, make a, a bit of the dark area at the top. You see, just at the, the distant side of, of a puddle a little bit. It just helps to suggest that there's some sort of um, depth or uh, I don't know if that's going to... It doesn't have to be religiously all the way, just um, one or two little marks might be useful. And I'm, I'm making marks here, which are completely arbitrary sort of marks. I'm going to paint that, then I'm going to do the people, and we're almost finished. So I'm going back to this area up here, going back to a dark colour, ultramarine blue. I'm going to use quite a lot of burnt sienna, just make it a little bit redder, a little bit browner. Um, 
and neutral tint and uh, pop in some marks here, which you could do this with a rigger, you could do it with a, it's quite nice to have um, the, the, the fine lines and points you can get. Um, in fact, the, one of the great things about a rigger is using it on its side. So let's just bring a few marks down here. So just broken them up a little bit. That's looking stunning. I'm, I'm actually going for a lot more brown. I'm just putting a few little brown dots in here. And you may not notice them. I can't see them actually. <laughs> it's so dark here. Um, all right, we've got a few marks there. Just break that up a wee bit. Um, so I want to put All right, so let's have a look at the people, these figures. Um, I think I'll give one of them a red jacket and so they stand out. Let's, um, let's give this fella here, I assume it's a man, let's give him a a red coat. Um, Got a red coat on there, and, and and she's got a blue one. Is this kind of the, the the less detail you can add? these figures the better i'm going to give them both uh dark trousers so let's just put i'm using the point of my brush here and trying not to do uh and anything too uh obvious there let's give them both some sort of a hat there and with a very strong very um now that i've got water on both of them here um i'm just going to pick up some neutral tint and the, the point is it it's there's almost no water in this and just drop a little bit on the side where the sh their shadows oh i've forgotten the dog um let's do the dog all right, let's um, the dog, the dog, the dog. Let's make him a brown dog of some kind. Where is he? There he is. Um, Have you ever used Frisket? What is that? Well, I don't know what is Frisket. It's kind of, I guess it's almost like a, a rubber that you paint on and it dries and then you, to keep the white. Oh. It's kind um, of like a, a mask. No, I, I haven't. I'll, I'll tell you something that I will do. Um, and I did a little bit whilst I was fiddling before. I'm just going to mix up a sh that shadow color, ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt sienna. And I'd quite like, um, let's just put some shadows running to the dog.
All right, there's a dog. Um, Uh, let's have a look around what more bits I'm going to. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. I can't actually see what's happening there. Um, I am. Um, I don't know what's happening there, but I'm going to wet that. And add a bit of yellow and just see what happens. talking about that conversation we had that's just sort of softening something there um, and is there anything else I want to do let's just uh, have a shadow from here um, so what I'm, I'm I'm going to add a little bit of light to the figures in a moment but all of these puddles are they're a little bit too um white for me so i think i think i'm going to bring some of the light that's in the background right when i half close my eyes it just looked all too white so let's just pick up some some of these autumnal colors um Add just one or two bits. I think you might need to put some light on soon, Mike. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put on these ones. Yeah, I think I'll need them. I needed them a long time ago. We can't see you. <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yes. It's just that you. I'm going to finish the shadow, but it's much better. The colours are much better. Yeah, I'm going to finish it off now with um, a few really dark bits and a few really light bits. So, um, I think this dog needs to be darker at the back. I forgot to put some shadow on him. Anyone, I, any idea what sort of a dog he is? He looks a bit shaggy to me. Um, right. Um, and he's following reluctantly behind, really, isn't he? Uh, and lastly, A few tweaks here. Right, lastly, So, this is the end of the painting. I'm going to my gouache, white gouache, tube of gouache, um, my rigger. Uh, I'm going to work straight out of the tube here and catch the odd glint, uh, maybe at the top of their heads, shoulders. Amazing, just a splodge on your head and splodge on each shoulder just sort of gives you the impression it's a figure then, doesn't it? Um, and a little bit on the maybe that's enough there. Why don't I just put the odd little dot 
particularly just in front of uh, some of these dark little dots that I did earlier, just to suggest that one or two things are glinting in this light. Right, that's it.